All you have to do is take a look at the many videos on YouTube that look at deck collections, deck walkthroughs, and even deck declutters and anti-hauls to let you know that we have a fascination with tarot decks. The tarot is a system that has produced so many different pieces of art in tarot decks that it is easy to get caught up in the thrill and the joy of looking at all the different decks. And so a tarot and witchery on her channel really put out this tag, Deck FOMO, is a chance to look at what of our purchasing habits and what makes FOMO real, because I do believe it's real. If you want to take a look at my responses to these eight prompts, stick around. At the beginning of this video, I just want to take a little bit of confession time. I love tarot decks and they are one of the driving passions in my tarot practice. Um, I love looking at the art. I love the different um, takes on the systems and things like that. And so it was really when I was listening to the Tarot Connection pod podcast, which I've mentioned before and I really miss, Lisa Ree Fallow, you did a great job. Thanks very much. Just had to get that out there. She was interviewing um, one of the owners of the Tarot Garden and she said, you can, love a you can love tarot just because you love tarot decks. And whenever I heard her say that, it was such a validation to me as a person who, who just fell in love with tarot decks. Since then, I have learned how to read and all the things that go along with it. But first and foremost, my love for tarot is tarot decks. So when we talk about deck FOMO, it is something that I think I actually deal with a lot. And so I want to kind of, when I saw this tag going around, it was hitting a little close to home. It was something that I really feel that we need to address or that I need to address um, just to, so I can kind of get on board, not only just with the community, but with myself to kind of, you know, some accountability on it. And hashtag deck FOMO, the first prompt is what triggers FOMO. And for me, there's a little bit of a difference between purchasing a tarot deck and succumbing to FOMO. A purchasing a tarot deck that I have considered, that I've looked at, that I've walked walkthroughs, that I have you know, ha have, has been on a wish list for a while is not necessarily FOMO because that is a reason choice. FOMO is almost that quick, in the moment, indecisive, just purchasing it because you want it, you want it now kind of deal. And that happens to me. It happens to me mostly whenever there is a new Kickstarter that captures my attention. Um, these, by and large, are decks that you do not have a lot of chance to research. There's a limited amount of time, so like the clock is ticking. And so I would say that that has been a lot of, I, I bought things on the fly on Kickstarter, um, especially if, um, if I got some free time, you know, it's okay. I'm on Kickstarter every day. So Kickstarters um, are real on FOMO. One, because they are generally independent decks that you can get at a good price. So um, especially if you get early bird, then, then you can do that. So I love being an early bird. That'll trigger FOMO too. Um, sales are also one way that I can really, um, be quick to to give into FOMO. Um, I, you give me a deck for ten dollars, half price, include free shipping, and and then, and then you got me on board. FOMO uh, can be triggered too by if I look at a deck and I really feel that there's something new that is saying about tarot or the tarot art. You give me a unique view of um, tarot, and I will and I will get on board. The El Goliath Tarot is one that I think, um, for me, was a good purchase for FOMO. We're, we're going to talk about, about those a bit more, but because you, I saw it around and as I looked at it, I really thought that his perspective on tarot and shadow work, the art was just really intriguing, was, it was a good purchase of FOMO because it did something different. To also, um, like the Witch's Wisdom Tarot too, it's also a bit of a deck FOMO because of what uh, they did with reversing the numbering of the Major Arcana. That was something different. And if there is something unique or something fun or different that you do with a tarot that isn't like anything else and that sparks my interest, then that that will get me to succumb to deck FOMO. What are your biggest, what are your biggest regrets with deck FOMO? There are two um, that I have that I'm, that I'm gonna mention. Um, and one of them is more of a sticking point and I'm a little bit more regretful. I have a little more negative opinion of it than, than the other. Um, so I'm gonna start with, with this, with the, with the easy one. This last one was the, um, the Dungeons and Dare, Dungeons and Dragon Tarot that just came out. 
granted, fan decks have been um, have been iffy in the last couple of years because if not if not fitting the system terribly very well, or if they're just pip decks instead of being flushed out fully seating pips, that 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 can be a whole thing. But with the Dungeons and Dragon Tarot, it had an opportunity to do something really amazing. And I started kind of looking through the guidebook and talked about how it did the suits differently, and I was, and I was here for it. But then when you start looking at the cards, and there was no way to tell what suit it was on the card, because it didn't follow the Rider Waite Smith system, which is fine, you don't have to. But you've got to let me know what your suit is in some way. Include a pip, something like that. And because it didn't, it's completely it's completely unusable. Um, I would dare say it's not even usable as a Oracle deck, which I, I suppose you could, but it's not for me because it doesn't have enough connections. Um, so the art's okay. The card talks iffy at best, but yeah, so that, that was the biggest regret. That was a regret, it's not my biggest regret. My biggest regrets with FOMO are have been Kickstarters and they have been situations in which the creator um, and the fulfillment have not been, I wouldn't, I wouldn't just say long, I mean, the, two, two instances uh, that the FOMO um, was, was long fulfillment. Um, one was the Blood Moon Tarot, which the deck turned out to be fine and I liked it, but the length of the fulfillment really turned me against the deck. And even before I got it, I had real negative feelings for the deck that I had to kind of deal with before I could even unbox the deck because I didn't want to carry that over. And my next, the current one, is a tarot, the, an, the uh, animated tarot. Um, it was one of the top selling, top funded tarot projects on Kickstarter in the last couple of years. Uh, it was estimated to be fulfilled in January of 2021, um, but it has not been yet fulfilled until a year and a half later. And like I said, it's not so much the lack of fulfillment that's just taking a while. There is um, a sense that we're not, I don't feel like we're getting the whole story. Yeah, there's delays in production, things like that. But this is one of those projects that it was basically meant to be added along with D&D sets, with like spell cards and things like that, which is fine. And they kind of added tarot at the end, uh, it felt like, which was great. And so, and that became a huge source of funding was for all the tarot folks. Now, as some of the it's like spell decks are being fulfilled and sent out, the tarot has been the longest delayed. And so that, that, that hurts. And there's, and there's almost a sense that in the updates that they kind of gloss over it and it's like, oh, it's not a big deal. It's just delayed. And, and it, and it really is becoming kind of an issue. And it reached a boiling point for me whenever I got my Alimentaro, Tarot, which I like. And uh, it hit the in a good sense of FOMO. And there was one of the cards from that deck in there. And so it's the sense like this third deck, this other deck from a different party, licensed one of the images from a tarot deck that has not been released and has been out, has been shipped around the world and it's done. And the original deck still hasn't been done. So that's, that's been the second one. And that's probably my biggest regret in FOMO. So I probably put a little long on that one. So let's talk about how do I set limits. And this is tough because I tried to set limits this year with a, with um, one deck a month. And, and no, completely not even. So I can't necessarily seem to set what is like a, a number limit. And one thing that I'm looking at is more of a, an idea of what can I use. And in um, Jessica by the Moon, I believe it's her channel name. I'll link it below. Had, a, had an amazing video um, that just came out a couple days ago on about how much is an, how many decks are enough or how much. And that was kind of where I'm at. It's like, when I have enough is kind of the limit. And she um, referenced an article in that one about how everything must pay, everything has two prices or, or there's a second price to everything. The first price is what you pay in money and the second price is what you pay um, to use it to get your money's worth out. And it's um, by a guy, and I'm linking below too. And it's this whole idea that for every tarot deck I bring in, there's two prices. There's a price I pay in money. And a lot of times that's the easy price. You know, I've got some cash, you know, I'll just buy it and get that fulfillment. And then the second one is, is do I pay the second price to get to know the deck, to use it for what it's worth? Um, and a lot of times, it really makes you think of the second price 
that I'm getting out of it, is it worth the first price? And so when I look at what's the limit, I like, what is the second price? Um, and so right now, currently funding on Kickstarter is the Out of Hand Tarot by Jamie Sawyer, which is a companion or sequel deck to the Pocket of Peers. I love the Pocket of Peers deck. I've got the deck and I've got the tiles and I use them. And so when it came time to back this one, I really had a question. Do I want the deck and the tiles again? <clears throat> I, so when this one came up again, there's an option for the Out of Hand Tarot deck and the Tarot tiles. And I, I knew about what the price was going to be for the set. And so I was like, okay, that's about right. But I having had this second thought, so I mean, the second price thought in my head, I really thought, I'm I'm not going I'm not going to use the tarot tiles enough to pay the second price. Um, I'm I'm just not. So I just I back the deck, which is which is great. I'll use and it'll be fun. But just knowing that having one the pocket of peers tarot tiles is enough, and I've paid that second price and continue to pay it. And so I enjoy it, but I, I can't justify paying the second price on another tarot tile set. Um, the fourth prompt is how many tarot decks do you have? And I, I don't know. A lot. I have a lot of decks. Um, one thing I did in the beginning of spring is I really did kind of, kind of clearing out. I didn't get rid of any of them. I just put a lot of them in storage and really focused on my handful of spring decks. And so that's been nice. And so they're still put up. The season is over. It's now summer. And they're still put up and they're still going to stay put up. And one thing I'm going to do too now is I'm going to pare down some of the decks I used for spring and put those up and have even less. Um, I'm really going to really think about kind of bringing it down and finding out um, the decks I'm using and really focus on paying some second prices. Problem five is how many decks do you need? And this is possibly the hardest question in the whole list. The whole list of prompts is how many decks do you need? And there is the cliche answer that one, one tarot deck is enough. A right away Smith and I'm good. And it's not, it's not enough uh, for me. And I, and I, and I know that, but how, how many is enough? I, I don't know. How many do I need? Um, so, you know, I've heard responses like one from each system, uh, you know, a pip deck, a thought deck and right away Smith. Yeah, maybe. Um, then I went back and looked at my, watched my video of only 10 decks. Um, and that was good. I thought 10, 10 was good, but that's not, I, so I don't know. I need as many as I need. Um, and the fact that I have a huge collection means I have enough. I have as many as I need, but then I always, I'm buying more too. Like I literally have got three on pre-order right now. Um, I've got one that'll be here on Saturday. You know, it's like, I've got, I've got more decks coming. I don't need them, but when I get them, I might need them. So I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough question. Um, and the idea of purchasing decks and how many decks do you need is the idea is like, do you need to buy one more? And the answer is no, I don't need any more deck. I have enough, but I will. And the idea still goes back to this idea is like, I, I will continue to get decks that I feel that I'll pay the second price on. And that, is, that has been revolutionary. And so, uh, so yeah, so the out of hand star, I think I'll pay the second price. Uh, the six props, a little bit fun. Um, how many decks do you want? I want them all. All, all of them. All of them. I want, I want them all. Um, because I'm greedy and I love tarot decks, you know, and I, I don't need to keep them all. I mean, I, I would, I have traded away lots of decks that I have. But, but I, I want them all. I want to see them all. I want to play with them all. I want, I, I want, I want them all. Um, and that's one the right from the drill. But you know, I'm not going to pay for them all. You know, there are, there are decks out there that I could buy, but I'm not going to be, but, I mean, I think we get there. It's like, I, I, I want, I want, I want them all. I, I want them all. I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't say no. Now I can't afford them all. And so I've got to make choices. But, but, but when you go to the phone, I was like, yeah. Yeah, I want them all. So the, the next to last prompt is prompt seven, is what is a positive um, deck FOMO purchase? Um, and I, I'm gonna say the Light Seers, which I love. Um, and I would say on the other hand, it's like I bought the Muse Tarot, the special edition, I got them both. 
Um, I love Chris Hand, and as soon as I got the Creator Sacred Creators Oracle, and I backed when I backed that, it was one of my very first crowdfunding. Uh, it was such a good experience. I love the deck um, that I knew that I would back anything she did. So whenever the um, Light Seers came out and they had the Muse Throw, I was like, mm, I'm I'm not gonna like the Muse Throw. I I kind of knew that um, because it wasn't quite my vibe, but. I, I bought I bought the set and so I have them both and, and they're good. So but I say the light series is a, is positive FOMO because I didn't I didn't want to miss out on that. Prompt eight is what are your thoughts about the current state of deck FOMO in our community? Uh, it's it's really interesting. Um, it's really interesting and one two because I I've been watching videos and a lot of folks really reference twenty twenty on as as deck FOMO and the fact that. During the shutdown, a lot of people purchased. The consumerism became retail therapy for a lot of folks who who had to isolate and wear a Um, One, I was essential. I guess you're a restaurant manager, um, and so I, I never, I never got quarantined. I never got like that. I went to work five days a week. You know, did my sixty hours. You know, so so I didn't have that experience. So that wasn't part of it for me. But for me. I have been part of this community for a while. Um, you know, I I attended my first tarot conference in 2010, but then I was part of the Eclectic Tarot years before that. Um, and I've, I've had deck FOMO since basically 2005, 2004 maybe, whenever I really started um, going at it again. And there, as I kind of pull back in perspective, deck FOMO has been been part of the tarot experience from the beginning for me. Um, for me, it wasn't because pre, I don't know, it wasn't pre Amazon. It was it was close, but um, I, I would go to bar, I would go to Borders, and see all the Los Carabao decks. I'm like, oh, I want that one, or I want that one, um, and I'd fall in love with them. Then it was eBay, and eBay was horrible because you would get in these auctions for these decks and. That that triggered FOMO huge. I had to get off eBay altogether um, because you know just the buy and the ad and the auction and so I got some great decks, but I'm I'm done. And then um, two, there were there was just always been this idea that collecting tarot decks has been an issue and a problem for some and not for others. There has been this idea that a lot of us would look up to people with huge collections, you know, 400, 500 decks, you know, just lots of decks. And you just, you would just marvel like, oh my gosh, so many decks. Um, but then also, you know, they would have this sense that, you know, folks, I have three decks, I have four decks, that's all I need. You know, I have, I have my Morgan career, that's, that's all I need. I'm like, okay. Um, but but that isn't necessarily any more morally correct to not have fewer decks than a lot. And so for everyone, it's it's kind of a personal deal. But as we kind of are in a moment in our nation, in our world, I think there is this idea that we want to consider how we're sparing our money, how we, where we are giving our time to. And I, I think we need to be observant and aware of how we're spending our money kind of sense, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I think the point is it's good that we have this kind of moment to talk about, hey, you don't need to back every deck. Hey, you don't need to purchase every deck. You may want every deck and you may like most decks, but you don't need to have them. And, and it's okay to miss out, you know, but you know, if you're that one, one creator who's got her deck on Kickstarter and just fingers crossed, that you know it funds so that she can finish the art and, and get this deck out in the world. It's it's a completely different thing, you know. Um, that's a different kind of FOMO. They're, they're going to miss out on having that. But you know, but for some of us, you know, can I wait until a deck hits mass market? Yeah, sure. There's a couple of decks that were on Kickstarter that I didn't purchase that were okay. But now that they hit the mass market scene, I I might get. But I really think as a community, it's always been a good idea to look at how we're spending and where our money's going and who we're backing and who, who, we're, who we're supporting. 
And for me, a, a lot of times, if I'm supporting someone I know, like Jamie Sawyer, who I've met in person, you know, and who I've, her, all of her products are great, and she is a authentic voice in our entire community, that's a good thing. Um, but sometimes if people, if we just need to be mindful of how we're spending our money. That it, if money, if money is not an option, not an obstacle, you have all the money in the world, I still think you, we need to be mindful of how we're spending our money because the money is voice. Now also too, for folks who can't afford all the decks that they may want, it's also very important to be mindful of where you're spending your money too because it it can become obsessive. It can become an addiction. It can be this thing that can take over. Um, and that's why I have 165 Los Garabayo decks, most of which I never use. Just don't even. You know, um, can I offer them? Sure, but I don't uh, because I love my collection. But the idea is that we we need to have this conversation, and I really think that's important. So um, I love these videos. I love the interaction with the different uh, folks. Finding new channels, which is always a good, good, I good, a good thing. I, I love I love seeing new people in our community. So I, I encourage this tag. I really hope more people do it. So that way we can talk about it, and you know, and have have a sense of camaraderie too. I think we're sharing, seeing a lot of the shared experience that we are part of a phenomenon sometimes and that it's not just us, that we all, we all can get caught up in FOMO. But, you know, but it's good that we, we take a moment and share this stuff. Uh, thanks for paying attention. A like, subscribe. I'll see you next time.